So you've been looking through social media for realism artists to follow, either to be inspired or just to look at their works, and slowly you start noticing a trend. So you might be questioning, what is the point of going to an art school if so many realism artists are self-taught? Or you're an artist that's considering going to an art school and you're wondering what it will be like. Then in this series, I will be going through my art journey in art college and my stories from there. Let's rewind the clock back to 2015, where most people consider it to be the golden age, when we only had to wear masks just because we were edgy, and Justin Bieber was all over the place. Okay, maybe golden age for some people. When a young man with big dreams named Richard was in his junior year of high school sitting in his R5 class. You heard it right, not R4, not R3, R5. Which was the highest level of art course which my high school had to offer, so basically, I was a big deal. <laughs> I had been taking drawing courses all my life and even though I didn't have a clear vision of what I wanted to be after high school, I knew I wanted to be an artist in some shape or form and to have my artworks in museums someday. I knew that realistically, it's not the smartest life choice because everyone knows about the starving artist stereotype. And given that I was doing very well in my other courses, I had other options. But I knew for sure that if I didn't pursue art, I would have regretted it for the rest of my life. And I think that's the mentality most artists have that made us follow our passion. I remember one day during critique, one of my classmates asked me where I wanted to go after high school. I looked straight into her eyes and said, art college. She asked, which one? I looked back at her and she looked back at me. And in that exact moment, I knew I had no idea which art colleges are out there. This whole time, I knew I wanted to go to art college, but I haven't figured out which ones are the best for me. Now, in my defense, it wasn't because I was dumb. Okay, maybe partially, possibly, partly, I was dumb, but... I had just come back from China after spending three years in China, so even though I could name some Chinese institutes, I didn't know what kind of American colleges were out there and the names of them and just generally how the American system worked. So instead of asking other classmates and other people in my profession what they thought was best for me, I went and did what any teenager with no social skills did, which was I went to Google and I typed top ranking art colleges in the US. I went through the list and wrote down a couple that sounded good. In hindsight, not very bright but I think it worked out. So for those of you that don't know, the US has this event called the College Fair, which was basically where representatives from colleges would come in and sit in booths and you would go up to them to get information about the school and they would talk to you about the courses, your grades, and basically try to convince you to apply to that school. But as our kids, we weren't that popular. And I'm not just talking socially, but also when it came to college fairs because there weren't enough of us that warranted a college fair booth. So basically we had an individual representative from our colleges come in and talk to us individually, which honestly, I think it's way cooler. And since my high school art teacher was pretty close with me and he really liked my work, he hooked me up with about four or five individual meetings with these representatives, some of which included the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts, the School of Art Institute of Chicago, and a couple others which I can't remember because like I said, it's been a while. And most of them went something like this. Hey, let me see your art. Okay, here. Wow, these are really good. You should apply to the school. Okay. Then one Tuesday morning, the sun was shining, the birds were singing to the tunes of Closer by the Chainsmokers in the dead middle of October. I don't remember, as I said, it's been a while. My art teacher comes up to me in class and tells me, hey, there's someone here from Maryland visiting that I think you should talk to. I looked up from my web browser video games on my school laptop because I was a huge nerd back then. Still am, but still. I got my artworks from the storage cubby and I faithfully walked towards the meeting room at the end of the hall to meet this representative. Now, as I mentioned before in the video, like 30 seconds ago, you should remember this, come on. The meetings were more or less the same, you know, very professional, straightforward, but not Kate from Maryland. Kate had more energy than a human realistically should have at 9 a.m. on a weekday. Like she was in her mid-20s and I feel like at a certain point in life you no longer wake up with the same amount of energy in your early teens. You start getting lethargic and that's around the same time when your will to live starts fading away from your eyes. <laughs> So basically, all in all to say, she was very energetic. Kate from Maryland started introducing herself to me and asked me how I was doing. It's 
Tuesday and it's 9 a.m. How do you think I'm doing? She then asked me if I have heard of the Maryland Institute College of Art, to which I replied, yes. Yes, I have heard of the Maryland Institute College of Art. Which was true because a few days prior, I did my research, you know, the quick Google search. And I also knew that the Maryland Institute College of Art, which is MICA, was number six in the top US art college rankings. Our artwork, she loved it a lot, and right there she said I could skip a few courses because of the level that I was at. This really stroked my ego at the time, and it sounded very good, but later on I kind of learned that I really needed those foundation classes, but that's a story for next time. But there was a reason why I only remembered Kate from Maryland and not some guy representative from New York. It was because of her passion and her belief in the community at MICA that kept the school at the top of my list. So when it came to visiting campuses, I only had MICA on my list because it was one of the only schools that was close to me. And I remember sitting in the auditorium and they had a presentation for the parents and all the high school students like me that came in for about 30 minutes, which again focused on the community aspect of the school and what they call a mica bubble, which sounds great, but in reality, it basically just means that the buildings are really close together and all within walking distance. So, you know, we walked around the campus as a group and we saw a bunch of the buildings, ate some food and drove about three hours home. So overall, it was a pretty good trip. So in the end, I applied to seven schools and in the East Coast and two in California. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with the application process, I'm gonna preface this by saying that my experience might not be the same as all of them because I know for some schools you have to write letters and there's extracurricular activities that you have to include, but not really for any fine arts. So basically I had to first log into this portfolio website, which looked like it was from the early 2000s with blinking bright buttons and letters. And I had to take good pictures of my works and basically upload them and caption them and write descriptions for them and this puts them in a portfolio for me and later on I log into a different website and link them together so it basically gets sent to the schools that I choose. I was never too worried about the results because I was always confident in my art skills and I knew my capabilities. And after a few months, I think around March of 2016, I started receiving letters from the schools about my results and how much they were offering to pay me to get there and i think i got into all the schools except one of the two that i applied for in california and conveniently micah offered me the most money and that combined with my experience and the general vibe that i was getting from the school i think everything kind of aligned and the location of the campus it's about three hours away from my home so it wasn't too far away so if i really needed something i could get it right away so that's the story of how i chose my art college as a realism artist this is going to be a series about my experiences on mica and my stories from over there over the period of four years i just want to say that i am by no means recommending mica to everyone out there i this is purely from my experience and we all got different art styles, we've got different things to look for, whether it's the location of the college, the professors, the programs that they offer. So don't be like me and actually do your research even though it technically worked out for me. I'm hoping my stories will more or less help you in some way of deciding. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so right now. If you already made it so far in the video, why not? And like the video because it really helps out the algorithm and such. I'm working on the biggest art piece that I've ever made in my life right now and it has a lot of sentimental value. So that's all going on right now in my Instagram. So feel free to check that out. I'll see you next time for stories.